time is still, is it not? For as far as I can see, everything remains still, untouched by the ticking of the timepiece that thuds and wanes throughout our days. And in this moment that lasts an eternity, I wade through the crowds of still people, their faces lined with frozen expressions, some of worry, some of pain. For life has its burdens upon man that he must choose to carry, even if the weight is more than his own body. And yet, too, in the faces I did see, those with smiles and cheery dispositions, who found an easier path to deviate down, which life offered up to them, or with which they strayed upon by careful accident. Yet the face that I sought was not of these. And so my troubled heart fluttered, as I could not find that face with which dreams are permeated into delightful sequences, where man's heart and soul are united, in a world where cruel life's arch cannot strike down its worries and frustrations and limits upon the box within man's mind that ever dreams. And too had I dreamt of that face I saw, the love that keeps this man alive, giving him hope and dreams in life fulfilled. But what if I could not seek her? What if in this stopping of time, of which I had no explanation of, she had been struck into a world of darkness, and no man could reach into and bring back nor? For within that darkness was a one-way exit, into the bleakness that only nightmares comprehend. Yet why was my gentle heart vexed in this way? For my mind only knew too well the extent of this vision I projected upon myself was the worst it could imagine. For it knew the love that I cradled. For a heart has to have love as a stomach has to have food. And for I, the wandering poet, whose romantic heart was filled with her illusions, with the words that evoked the very strings of my being and brought me such beautiful joy that no canvas, no mountain stream, no cloudless sky reaching the horizons could ever bring. For there was no comparison of Mother Nature's gift that outweighs her gift of the woman I sought in my dreams. That beautiful creature who stood tall in all moments, in all objections, for she was a statue of perfection carved lovingly out of the clay of life. Her very words were as to me like the tune of a sweet bird that carries such melodious notes that reach through the skin of the hardest man into the gentle sack of the heart that beats for a love that doth shine so brightly as the love that I sought in this frozen time which I walked. And there, not far from whence I started, was she, frozen as all the rest, and up close I came, and took upon myself to place my loving hand upon her frozen cheek, and caress her beauty, her dark complexion, her crystal eyes, shining as bright as if she gazed at that very moment, the lover that now stood in front of her, her sweet, succulent lips poised ready for a lover's kiss to be implanted, as wet the lips of beauty's taste. Her fine body did I place my hands along the gentle curves and lines that made up the woman of my dream. For I could no longer wait for time's return, and in my mind I caught a glimpse of a solution to this uneasy moment, and placed my wet lips upon her dry lips, and within the very moment the flesh of my lip touched upon the flesh of her lip. Time began to move as if a world like a watch was wound up again and people continued as our lips in her movement towards me in which she had been going before time stood still embraced one another as our eyes aligned to gaze within each other's souls left open and our bodies entwined and the years parting that had taken place as time stood still was met with such an everlasting passion that in those time-moving moments each second became a year.
Ah, uh, that, that, that was good. <laughs> That's the best one I've ever done. <laughs> that was for you. <laughs>